Hi there, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. You're watching a Ritter Bit Will Do. I gotta tell you, this is not, this is not the first time I've attempted this video. It is not the second time. It's not the third. This is the fourth time I've attempted to make this video about trying to cut this PTO shaft without getting interrupted. So I'll tell you what, we're gonna make this video happen regardless if we get interrupted. Doesn't matter, we're gonna power through, we're gonna cut a PTO shaft, that's happening. So stick around. All right, as many of you know, this is a tiller that I purchased not too long ago, probably three and a half weeks ago. My wife still doesn't know about it. I, I didn't tell her I was gonna buy a tiller. I just left one day, picked it up, brought it home, and oh, here it is. Yes, she is in the garage every day, getting into the car on this side in the garage, and she hasn't noticed it. And I think it's because it kind of looks like my flail mower, and she doesn't quite exactly know what it is. So, <laughs> I might be in the clear. I might get away with this. Uh, I'm hoping. Fingers crossed, right? Well, I bought this. Uh, I bought this tiller used. It came off of a John Deere three series, and the PTO shaft right now, as it is on my BX, is too long because on um, the three series is a little bit bigger tractor. Plus, it had the I match system, uh, so it had a quick hitch. Basically, the John Deere's version of a quick hitch. They call it the I match. It's the same thing, but. You know how John Deere is, they gotta have a proprietary name and item for everything that they make. Well, here's a PTO shaft. It does have, I don't know if you guys can see this from your angle, it has a slip clutch, which is great because this is gear driven, uh, it's not belt driven. If it was belt driven, the slip clutch really wouldn't be that necessary, but because this is gear driven, there's no give anywhere other than the slip clutch. So I have to make this a little bit shorter. You can see that it is about four inches too long. So. We're gonna take some measurements. We're gonna make sure that it's just four inches that we need to cut off. Um, it might be about five inches, I'm guessing. And uh, then I'll show you how to cut one of these. So now we've got both pieces of this PTO shaft off of the tractor. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to the tractor with the tape measure and we're gonna measure how far the distance is from the detent of one shaft on the tiller to the detent of the PTO shaft on the tractor. When I say detent, what I'm talking about is this little groove back here. That's where the pin locks into. And if we go over here to the tiller side, you can see that it also has a little detent. So we're gonna measure the distance from there to the distance to here. And that's gonna give us a good, uh, good idea of how long we need to cut that PTO shaft. So from detent to detent, it looks like we have about 24 inches right on the nose. I don't know if you guys see that right there, 24 inches. And you'll notice that I brought the tiller up a little bit. It's off the ground right now. But the uh, the gearbox is level with the tractor PTO. So these two points from the tractor PTO to the gearbox PTO is level. Because that's as close as this is possibly going to be able to get uh, to each other, right? If it's up high, that PTO shaft is going to slide apart. If it's down, you know, if it's down low, it's also going to come apart. But as it comes up, those PTO shafts, is going to slide in on each other um, to make sure that uh, everything is still engaging. So you want to make sure that uh, you're getting that angle at the shortest point, okay? Not the longest point, so make sure that your gearbox and tractor PTO are level. It doesn't need to be perfect, but it needs to be pretty close. All right, so I've got both ends of the PTO shaft apart and up here on my work workstation area. And uh, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put them together and we're gonna measure it. You notice that this metal part is longer, it sticks out farther than the plastic part? Well, there's a reason for that, right? This metal shaft, will, and you'll notice that it has a little flat end on the bottom. Sometimes that's hard to see, but notice these are round up here. This is flat down here, okay? Rounded, here. Round, round, flat. Okay, so look for that flat end, and then find the other flat end on this one, which is even smaller to see, okay? Oh, I don't know if you guys can see that, but these two are gonna slide together. So we're gonna make that happen right now, hopefully. Let's see. Oh, there we go, there we go. Oh, no, that ain't gonna work. Ah. All right, that'll, hold on, <laughs> that'll work, here we go. So, watch this. 
it's important when you cut your PTO shaft that you have the metal part, you know, the structural part of the PTO shaft be a little bit longer than the plastic part because it makes it possible to fit together. If this was the same length as the plastic, it would be impossible to put this together. It really would. So you find the flat part, you find the flat part, they go together just like that, nice and easy. And now you have the metal parts together first, and then the plastic parts come together, and you line those up and you get them to go, and it goes right together just like that. So we wanna push it all the way together, as far as tight as it could go, and then we're gonna take a measurement. Now we measured from detent to detent, from the tractor to the tiller. So we're gonna measure from where the pin is, the detent, right here, to the pin over here. Okay, so from detent to detent. And we're looking, we need it to be 24 inches or a little bit less, okay? So I'm gonna line this up to where about that pin would be. So right about there. I'm gonna hold that so it's flat. And we have approximately, we have about 27 and a half inches, okay? So right here, it's at 27 and a half inches. I think we can get away, I think we're gonna get away with five inches. So we're gonna cut five inches off the PTO. Uh, that's gonna give us enough room for air, okay? And so instead of 27 and a half, we're gonna get it down to um, 22 and a half. So we're gonna make this 22 and a half inches which gives us an inch and a half of play, which, which is good because you don't want it to be at 24. You want it to be just a, a little bit shorter than 24. It doesn't have to be much. In fact, it doesn't even need to be an inch and a half like I'm doing, I'm just doing an inch and a half. So, but uh, that's what we're gonna do. So to do that, you have to cut both pieces down, right? So I'm gonna take five inches off of this, and then I'm gonna take five inches off of this one, okay? So, and then they will go together and it should be around 22 and a half inches as what we're looking for. Now, when I cut it, I'm going to cut the plastic first at five inches, five inches of plastic we're cutting right off, and then I'm gonna cut five inches of metal, the structural part, and then I'm gonna do the same thing for this PTO shaft, for this half of it, five inches off the plastic and then five inches off the metal. And that will still make sure that this metal part is sticking out farther than the plastic, which is the secret to success. Does that make sense? Let's get at it. So my weapon of choice is going to be this cheap $10 Harbor Freight grinder with a cutting wheel on it. It just works, uh, it works great actually. And uh, where's that extension cord? There it is. You know, in your garage, it is so convenient to have an overhead extension cord. It really is. Just break right smack in the middle, bring it down, boom, there it is. All right, so I'm going to mark the PTO shaft. We're taking off five inches. All right, so I got a red marker on black. It won't show up really good, but it'll show up enough for me to see it. So there's five inches, and then we'll bring this out a little bit. Wrap this tape around and get that square, and there we go. Uh, right now, we're only cutting the plastic, so we don't want to go into the metal. If we see sparks starting to fly, I've gone too far. Don't want to go that far in. five inches. I hope. <laughs> you always got to dunk yourself. Yeah, that's five. All right. Next. Now we're going to take five inches off of the metal part, right? The structural part. Okay. So that'll give us right up to here. Take a couple different spots right there. And I uh, should probably have a different way to mark this because it's kind of greasy. Yeah. 
it looks it looks pretty good. What I'll do in a minute is I'll, I'll take a file and I'll go in there and I'll file that out. But let's cut this other one first. Okay, so five inches again. This says, do not operate if missing guard. You don't want to end up like the picture. You don't want to be turned into a pretzel like that guy. I mean, look at him. Ooh. He's, he's going to be hurt. Looks like Gumby. There, good enough for a town this big. All right, I got a little bit of the, a little bit of this lithium grease. I kind of like this stuff, so I'm just gonna, gonna use that just to kind of coat the shaft in here. I, I like it because it seems to last a lot longer than you know WD-40 does. And I mean, there's WD-40 definitely has its its place, right? Um, but. For something you want to last a little bit longer than this WD-40, this works pretty good. So I'm lining up these two sides, making sure that they work. Look at that. It works like it's supposed to. Now, if we measure this, if we measure this, guys, we're going to have exact, what are we going for? 20, 22 and a half, right? From, from detent to detent is what we're hoping. <laughs> okay, let's see if this worked out. So from detent to detent, we have 22 and and three quarter. 22 and three quarter. <laughs> pretty pretty close. 22 and three quarter will be just fine. I don't know. I'm not very good with a grinder, as you can see. Well, yeah, this isn't perfect, but it's like I said, it's good enough for a town this big. The thing that we, we didn't want it to be longer than 24. That was the goal, right? We didn't want this to end up longer than 24. Otherwise, we're going to have issues. But again, we didn't want it to be too short. Otherwise, you know, it's too short. If we're way up high or way down low, this still has to move. So this should work just fine for us. We're gonna put it together. We're almost there, so close. Well, here we go. The PTO shaft is hooked up. Everything seems to work. We have about maybe an inch and a half, inch and maybe two inches there of, of play, which is good. We've got plenty of engaging uh, a metal underneath this plastic guard that is going to run this tiller just fine. And look look at these tines. I mean, this, is, this tiller is used, but boy, it runs good. It's got a tight gearbox, uh, which means it, it moves smoothly and there's no slop. There's no play in it. It's just... It's really tight, so that's a good thing. That's what you want to look for in used equipment because the gearboxes are always the most expensive to replace. Okay, guys. A lot of you have been asking how to cut a PTO shaft. That's how you do it, as far as I know. I, I think I, I covered most steps, right? Can't, I think I did everything right. I hope. <laughs> if you have a question, uh, leave it in the comments. You can also check out our Facebook group, A Ritter Bit Will Do. There you can chat with me, ask me questions. I'm, I'm usually pretty good about replying to you in real time if you, uh, if you wanted to message me or something, like right away. If it's something super important you need to know, uh, you can get a hold of me that way. Now, if you like this stuff, thumbs up is always important. Promote my channel to a larger YouTube audience. I'd really appreciate that, you guys. 
And until next time, everybody, keep on tractoring, and God bless.